Welcome to White Lecture Online. So now let's combine impulse and momentum and show some examples of how to deal with that. So here we have three examples. One where we drop a ball from a height of, well, we don't know what the height is, but we do know that when it strikes the ground, it's moving at a minus eight meters per second. And when it leaves the ground, it's moving at a positive four meters per second. Why aren't the velocities the same, but in opposite directions? Because some energy is lost into collision. So we know that momentum, well, is momentum conserved? Hmm, well, that's kind of an interesting question because notice that initially momentum was moving in a downward direction or the direction of momentum was in a downward direction and then afterwards the momentum is a, a positive direction. So momentum does not appear to be conserved. However, the whole system is the ball and the earth. And so we can imagine as the ball hits the earth, the earth will bounce back some distance in this direction so that even though the ball moves upward, the earth now moves downward some, with some velocity. And so therefore momentum is conserved when we include the earth. Of course, the earth is so big, we can't measure any change in velocity of the earth, but that's essentially what is happening. But we can calculate the impulse because the impulse is the change in momentum and the change in momentum for the ball. So what we're assuming now is that there's a force acting against the balls that collide with the floor. And so that changes the momentum of the ball. So when you say momentum is not conserved because it changes, well, if we take the ball by itself, then that's correct. But if we take the ball and the earth combined, then of course momentum is indeed conserved and the change in momentum is zero. So here we're isolating the momentum of the ball and there's some force acting on the ball, which is the earth pushing on the ball when the ball strikes the earth. And so what we end up with is that therefore the impulse is the mass times the change in velocity. You can see up there that that's the equation we end up with. So we take the mass of two kilograms and the final velocity minus the initial velocity and we do have to account for the sign for the direction. So the final velocity is upward so it's positive, the initial velocity is downward so it's negative but we're subtracting the initial velocity. So essentially it'd be 4 plus 8 or 12 times 2 or 24 kilograms meter per second for the impulse. That's the force times a certain amount of time of contact but since we don't know the time of contact this is the only way that we can actually calculate the impulse. A second example could be where we have a similar situation but instead of giving us the velocity of impact and the velocity as it returns back into the air maybe they tell us from what height it was dropped and how high the ball will go after the collision with the earth. So there we can say that let's find the velocity of impact and the velocity at which it leaves the, the ground by using this equation where the velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh. Of course, the initial velocity is negative, the final velocity is positive. Starts from a height of 3 meters, so from that we can calculate that the velocity of impact is 7.67 meters per second, and the velocity by which it leaves the ground is 6.26 because the final height is 2 meters. So therefore, the impulse is the change in momentum, which is the mass times the change in velocities. Plug in the velocities, remember again that the initial velocity is negative, so we subtract the initial velocity becomes positive. So we get 2 times 13.93 or 27.86 kilogram meters per second for the impulse. And finally, the example shows that we have a similar situation where a ball hits the wall and bounces back. We are ignoring motion maybe caused by gravity. Ignore that simply, the ball hits, the ball goes back. At the moment that it hits the wall, it's moving at 6 meters per second to the left. At the moment it leaves the wall, it's moving at 5 meters per second to the right. And we could just take that momentary point in time right there. And so again, the impulse is a change in momentum, which is m times a change in velocity. The final velocity is positive to the right. The initial velocity is negative to the left, but we're subtracting the initial velocity so this becomes positive. 5 plus 6 is 11, and so we end up with 22 kilogram meters per second for the impulse. So here are some practical examples of how to deal with impulse relative to momentum. Notice that momentum is not conserved when we isolate the object, the ball itself, but if we take the ball in the wall, which is attached to the earth, or the ball in the floor, which is attached to the earth, that in itself, momentum is conserved, but isolating the balls, momentum is not conserved, and therefore impulse can be considered to be the change in momentum. And that is how it's done.